Over the years, I've heard people say God can't stand the presence of sin. Really? When I hear that, I think of God as like Mr. Clean, right? He likes everything spotless and spick and span and orderly. So he's got his Tupperware bins and shoe organizer and the garage is all neat and tidy. Only problem is we've been out playing in the mud. So we come home dirty, ready to kind of jump in by the warm fireplace and be with our heavenly father. But God comes out on the front porch and boots us like Mr. Clean going, get your filthy tail out of here until you get yourself cleaned up and can come inside. The irony in this picture is we're the ones pursuing God and he's the one backing away, unwilling to be found. But the gospel moves in the other direction. The more we dive into the biblical story, I become convinced we've got it backwards. Our problem is not so much that sin, God can't stand the presence of sin, but rather the opposite, that sin can't stand the presence of God. Here's three examples to explain what I mean. First, the Garden of Eden. This is where sin first enters the world. So it's a good place to ask, how does God respond? Well, when Adam and Eve devour the flesh of that forbidden fruit and rebel against God, God's not backing away going, oh no, away from me, you dirty fruit eaters. Like Adam and Eve are the ones running, hiding in the bushes and cowering and covering themselves with leaves while God's out hunting through his garden, searching and calling out, where are you? And looking for his lost and wandering children. And it's true, he has to boot them from the garden, but the reason given is, it says, lest they eat from the tree of life and be stuck that way forever, basically. And so God's concern even there is to protect them and in in us in our corrupted estate. Second scene is Mount Sinai, where God delivers Israel and he brings them to a mountain to this wedding, this covenant with God. And three times in the story, God's glory comes down the mountain to dwell in the presence of his people. And three times the people reject God and run away and try and cover over his glory with a veil. Kind of like Adam and Eve covering themselves with leaves. They're getting away from the presence of God that's coming after and for them. Third story is Jesus, the incarnation. As Jesus steps into our world, Jesus is the glory of God coming down the mountain to dwell in the presence of his people. Jesus is God out in the garden of his world calling out, where are you? Looking for his lost and wandering kids. And I love John says, Jesus comes as the light into the world. Only the problem he tells us is not that we weren't good enough or didn't try hard enough. It's just the problem is that we loved darkness rather than light, that we preferred life without God. So when people say God can't stand the presence of sin, I kind of want to go, well, if we mean God can't stand to be in the presence of sin, it's backwards. God's constantly coming after us in our broken estate. But if we mean God can't stand what the presence of sin does to his world, there I think we're right, because God hates that sin alienates us from himself, that it destroys and fractures our world, our communities, and tears everything apart. God gets angry because he loves the world. He gets upset at the destructive power of sin, but God is good and he's coming after us to heal and make us whole. On a personal level, one of the sins I've struggled with over the years is judgmentalism. Particularly when I think I'm doing well. My church attendance is good, I'm avoiding those vices and all. I can start to think pretty highly of myself, and even start to look down on others. Ironically, when I distance myself from others, that way like I end up distancing myself in the long run from God, who loves them. I can feel empty and despairing like God's absent. I end up looking more like a Mr. Clean image. Fortunately though, God's been unwilling to leave me in that superficial place keeps coming after my heart. I want to invite you to explore with me this relentless pursuit of God, his desire to restore us and bring us back in the fullness of life with him. The Pursuing God by Joshua Ryan Butler. A reckless, irrational, obsessed love that's dying to bring us home. Available now.